we have what we call our white mass. Um, and it's our white mass because, you know, we have our blue mass, which recognizes our first responders. And then we have a red mass, which acknowledges our attorneys and judges and all those people. And our white mass acknowledges the Ministry of Healthcare. And of all the different um, occupations in our parish, by far, healthcare would be the number one, especially with nurses. We have more nurses. I know it's very good when my heart hurts. Anyway, so, uh, they see me go down. We have that special machine, AED. Anyway, and so today we celebrate in a special way our healthcare workers. So if we have any healthcare ministry people, we're going to invite you to the chapel. And then when we leave church, we're going to go to the chapel first which means you get first dibs on lots and lots of food. We got lots of, we love to eat here. So you'll get first dibs on the food before everybody else. Anyway, and so um, I do invite all our healthcare workers to go to the chapel. We're gonna come in here and then you're gonna go around and preferably sit in the front. But you know, if you, anyway, it's all good. And then at the end of mass, I'll have a special blessing as we celebrate your ministry, because it really is a very important ministry. We're going to have our prelude, and then we will process in with our health care ministers, right? I got that right? Good luck with that. And then we will have Mass as usual. So thank you for being here as we celebrate this very important ministry. Thank you.
Everything else fades when I keep my eyes on you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. As we gather together with the purpose of giving thanks and giving praise to God, we are ever mindful of his infinite love for each one of us and we are also mindful of our need for his mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the source of life. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, time and time again, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you promise us eternal life with the Father. Lord, have mercy. mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray for our needs and the needs of our loved ones. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty with sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Any children would like to join us, we do have a special children's liturgy of the word. We will await your return to celebrate the Eucharist. Thank you, Aaron. Would of God speak, would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty to be still and reading from the prophet of the book Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, shout with joy for Jacob, exult at the head of the nations, proclaim your praise and say, the Lord has delivered his people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring back them, I will bring them back from the land of the north. I will gather them from the ends of the world with the blind and the lame in their midst, the mothers and those with child. They shall return as an immense throng. They departed in tears, but I will console them and guide them. I will lead them to brooks of water on a level road so that none shall stumble. For I am a father to Israel. Ephraim is my firstborn. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every high priest is taken from among men and made their representative before God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal patiently with the ignorant and erring, for he himself is beset by weakness, and so, for this reason, must make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. No one takes this honor upon himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, it was not Christ who glorified himself in becoming high priest, but rather the one who said to him, You are my son, this day I have begotten you. Just as he says in another place, You are a priest forever according to the order of Mezekiel, the word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a sizable crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind man, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. Many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more. Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, call. So they called the blind man, saying to him, take courage, get up. Jesus is calling you. He threw aside his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him in reply, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man replied to him, master, I want to see. Jesus told him, go your way. Your faith has saved you. Immediately, he received his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord.
I know I always feel safe from crime when our blue mass is happening, but right now I feel safe from a heart attack because <laughs> I got all my doctors and nurses and uh, of all the professions in our community, by far, we have a predominance of nurses. You know, whenever we have a gathering of a small group of 10 people, two of them are always nurses. So we have a very large percentage of nurses. So today we celebrate you and thank you for your ministry. And I do call it a ministry. And uh, because it is a ministry. And obviously, you know, you get a, a Sunday Miss Mass excuse if you're working, okay? Just, you know. <laughs> because you're doing ministry. And it's important for us to recognize how much we rely on you. And yeah, you could have sat, with, I know you could have sat with Vinnie, jo Joanne. She's like, Nick, leave Vinnie in the back, you know, whatever. Okay. And Carol, you could have sat with your son, Sean. I told you, you could sit with, it's all good. They said, heck no, we don't want to sit with them. We're, we're free today. So today we, we do honor your ministry. In fact, Joanne told me she was first came to our parish because someone invited, we used to have white mass on a Friday night back in the day. Everything changes. And uh, someone invited her to the, to the um, white mass and that's how she became a member. So we're hoping Danita can uh, make that same change there, all right? So <laughs> Tracy invited you for the, anyway, it's all good. So today we gather together, and once again, we are continuing in the Gospel of St. Mark. And we are finishing up this section in Mark's Gospel after we had that passion prediction where Peter recognized that Jesus is the Messiah uh, and the Christ. And then after that, we had this section where St. Mark pretty much shows us how the disciples just don't get it. And they started arguing about, you know, who's the most important. And we heard that we had to embrace humility and not pride. We heard about who's in and who's out. And we heard all these different stories of how the disciples didn't quite understand. Now, last week we had Father Roos here, and he did a thing which I would never do. You know, when you're, when you're completely retired, you get away with more things. But before he read the gospel, he said, now, the part of the gospel that's not here is another passion prediction. And so he did that, and then he read the gospel, which we heard, and the disciples wanted to sit one on his right and one on his left. And Father Roos pretty much talked about the fact that Jesus came to, be, to serve, not to be served. And how following Christ would mean that we don't lord power over each other, but rather we come to serve, and that we can't be like those who lord power over people. And I love one of the examples he used. He used the example of tailgating. And I am, as I got old, I, I drive like Mr. Magoo. <laughs> and and I, I don't speed, okay? Obviously, going the speed limit means you're going slow. And obviously that people love to ride, I wanna put a sign, Mr. Magoo at the wheel, slow down. In fact, coming back on Friday night, it was night, which I don't like to drive at night anymore. It's fun to get old. But anyway, I was coming back from the St. Jude banquet, and this car behind me, there was a car behind me, but he was so close, I could not see his headlights. They were like that close to my trunk. I was like, please, you know. And then whatever happens, usually when I realize they're tailgating me, I usually pull over. I'm like, you know, go around me. And then they always wave their fingers at me. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> So uh, we heard last week that tailgating is an abuse of power. And so if you're tailgating somebody, just say, oh, that's Father Phil, bless his heart. <laughs> he, he likes to go the speed limit, what a concept. Anyway, so um, yeah, but, but we can't be that way with us. We can't lord power over people even when it's tailgating. So now we are continuing right after that uh, story where the disciples want to sit one is right and left. And now we are in Jericho, which is the last stop before Jerusalem. And it's the last stop before Jesus will go up to his throne. And his throne is obviously the cross. And so we're at this last stop. There's another passion prediction, and now we're at the last stop. And so Jesus, this man, on the way out of Jericho, notice that it's Jesus and a sizable crowd. And so when we had that first recognition of who Jesus was by Peter, that was just with the disciples. 
But now we have the disciples and a sizable crowd. And we hear sitting on the side of the road is Bartimaeus. And Mark's community would know that that name means son of Timaeus. He goes on to say there is Bartimaeus who is a blind man, the son of Timaeus. Well, obviously, his name is son of Timaeus. So St. Mark is obviously making a connection between the son of Timaeus and we hear about another son, son of David. So in this passage, we hear a son of Timaeus and son of David. And obviously, St. Mark wants us to notice that. And so we hear that this blind man, this son, well, you need to know who Timaeus is, right? Everybody knows who Timaeus is? Yeah. You, you learned it in philosophy class. No, it's one of Plato's uh, dialogues. Uh, so 300, but Mark's community would be familiar with the dialogue of Timaeus. And Timaeus was a demiurge who created earth, wind, and fire and water, not the band. Oh. <laughs> earth, wind, fire, and water, not the band. And so the creator of earth, wind, and fire, and water, is not the creator. So for Mark's community, if you think the creator of earth, wind, and fire, and water is Timaeus, you are blind, right? Because we know the real creator, and it's not Timaeus. And so we hear now this blind man who thinks the creator is Timaeus, because he's the son of Timaeus, obviously not a good Jew, but obviously one of those people. And so this man hears that this guy from Nazareth is here. Now, at the time, they understood, it wasn't in scripture, but they thought the Messiah would come from Nazareth, that he'd be a Nazarene. And so he hears that this guy from Nazareth is approaching and he calls out, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. Son of Timaeus, son of David. And so son of David obviously is of the royal lineage of David and et cetera and so forth. But basically, it's another title for Messiah. And so he recognizes that Jesus is also the Messiah is supposed to come from Nazareth. This guy is the son of David. He is the Messiah. And he says, calls out, have pity on me. He recognizes he needs pity, or some translations would say mercy. He recognizes who Jesus is, like Peter did, and recognizes that he needs mercy. And they tell him to shut up. And they rebuke him and tell him to keep quiet. And so he keeps calling out. Now, we also need to understand that the word call is the same word that is at the root of the word church, ecclesia. It's kaleo, whatever, I don't speak Greek. Do you all speak? Anyway, it's, it's to call, okay? And the word church is to call, and he calls, and I kept emphasizing that he calls out to Jesus. He told the disciples to go call him. The disciples say, Jesus called you. And in two sentences, we heard the word call five times because Mark wants to emphasize something about being called and being called, which is connected to church. And we have to also know some of more backstory that in the first days of the church, we were not called Christians. We were called the way, okay? So before we were called Catholics, before we were called Christians, Jim knew this, we were called the way. And it's important for us to hear that because we're going to end up this story today with Bartimaeus going on the way. We're so smart. Okay, and so... He calls out to Jesus, have mercy on me. And Jesus then calls him over. And then Jesus says to him, like, you know, well, what do you want from me? It's like, duh. That's like when we call the nurse to our room. What do you want? Oh, fix my pillow. What do you want? Yeah, you know, the, the cord's wrapped around our neck. You know, we, we're getting intravenous. Uh, hey, what do you want? I'm like, the cord's wrapped around my neck. What do you think I want? You know, okay. And so what do you want? And you see, 
Jesus doesn't presume, but he says, what do you want? Now, the blind man, who's not really blind because he really now sees better than everybody else sees because he recognizes that Jesus is the son of David and can give mercy and pity on him, says, I want to see. Wow, I want to see. Do we want to see? I think the hardest person for us to see is ourselves. It's very hard to see ourselves. You know, we record mass like Saturday night. I never watch it. It's, it's the most horrible thing in the world because that horrible priest and oh my God, the, ugh. Do we want to see ourselves? And we don't really want to see ourselves, because if we see ourselves, we might have to change. Now, those of you who are married, right, Jim? She helps you see yourself. All the time. All the time. <laughs> yes, dear. Okay. I shouldn't have said that. All right. Good job. You know, and, uh, but she doesn't want to see herself. So don't, no, she never does. Don't even attempt it because it's not going to work. <coughs> and so something now, she, oh, Father Phil, you're not married. You don't get to, oh, believe me. You know, poor Jim has one wife. I have like 50. Oh, oh yeah. They tell me what they think, a plus. And believe me, I get to see myself through the eyes of others all the time. But, you know, it's always fascinating. Like, sometimes I'll be at a, at a meeting. I got a lot of meetings. And after the meeting, there's a meeting before the meeting and a meeting after the meeting. And so sometimes at the meeting, after the meeting, I'll say, you know, I think you came across just you know, a little bit aggressive. What are you talking about? I am never aggressive. I am the nicest person. What I just said what I... Like, never mind. I mean, do obnoxious people really know that they're obnoxious? We know who they are. Do rude people know that they're rude? Mm -mm. We know who they are. But people tend not to see themselves. I've learned to say, oh, you were being aggressively helpful. Okay. <laughs> and so do we really ever see ourselves? Well, we don't like to see ourselves. But I think a lot of times we Christians, you know, do we really want to see ourselves as Christian? By the definition of some, if someone says you're a Christian, I'm like, ooh, what do you mean? I'm judgmental, closed-minded, mm. you know, because Christianity is getting a bad rap these days, you know, with what people think that they're Christian. I'm like, anything but. Last Sunday, <coughs> after um, the 8.30 Mass, I was in the cafe, and this gentleman came up to me and said, oh, I'm helping my sister paint her house. We're in Wilbur, blah, 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 after the hurricane, doing all this kind of stuff. And he said, I really, really liked you. I was like, oh, I like you too. I like to be liked. It's a rare event. But, and I said, well, great. And he said, I really liked your church, and I'm from Seattle, and I really haven't gone to church much. But 40 years ago, I went to church, and we had a wonderful church and a wonderful priest, and it was wonderful. And I like you, you and your community because you're all involved in affordable housing. And he got a sense of what we're about. And uh, he said to me, but I was very, very disappointed. I was like, uh-oh, here it comes. <laughs> Bring it on me. And he said, I was really disappointed because of all the things that you all talked about and you could sense, you didn't say anything about the genocide in Gaza. And I said, <laughs> what genocide in Gaza? <laughs> and I was like, ah, oh, yuck. I said, you're right. He said, well, you did include in the petitions, you know, for those who have died in Ukraine and in Gaza and blah, blah, blah. But he said, you really didn't say anything about the 40,000 people, 20,000 or more of which are innocent civilians, most of which are women and children being killed. And I was like, well, you know, I'd rather close my eyes. I don't want to see that. Because as you know, of course, we support Israel. But when is enough enough? When does the killing of 40,000 people, 20,000 of which are innocent civilians, when does enough become enough? 
And are we using our voices to all those who are involved and have a groundswell of our church throughout our country and throughout the world, which our Pope said we need a ceasefire. Enough is enough. And so when he challenged me to open my eyes, once you see, you can't unsee. It's really hard once you see to close your eyes and not see. And all I could always think about was, you know, Nazi Germany. And I could think about how the people then, as they carted people off in cattle cars to be exterminated, how people could just close their eyes and not see. What do you want? I want to see. And yet, if we see, then we have to see that there are people at our border seeking a better life, that they are our brothers and sisters. How do we see them? Like in Jericho, we see beggars all over town asking for help and assistance. Do we just... <laughs> I remember in New York City when I was growing up, occasionally for whatever reason we'd go early on a Saturday morning for whatever and we'd go through the Bowery uh, in the winter time and if you're not familiar with New York there are crates where the subway has heat come up and there'd be homeless people all along the crates I don't know if they still do that or not but they probably do and my father would don't look at them don't make eye contact you don't see them you just step over them like, they're not people. Fascinating. Sometimes we don't want to see. And so, in today's gospel story, Jesus says to him, what do you want? And he says, I want to see. Then Jesus says to him, okay, go on your way. Which is rather fascinating because in Mark's gospel, we know that part of the mission statement is to change direction of your life. Repent and believe and live the gospel. And Jesus says to him, go on your way. Go on your way. What gives you the choice? What way are you going to choose? And those of you who are from here know that the theme song in hell is, I did it my way. But Bartimaeus chooses not to do it his way, but rather he chooses to do it Christ's way. And he joins the way. It's like a double entendre. I think that's the right way to say it. When a word is got more than one meaning. And obviously for Mark's community, joining the way is joining the church. He's been called, and he responds. And this whole gospel is about a call and a response. And so Bartimaeus called to Jesus. Jesus called to him. Bartimaeus opened his eyes and could see immediately, because everything in Mark's gospel is in Kairos. Everything is immediately. It's right in the now. His sight is restored. He can see not as man sees, but sees as Christ sees, and he joins the way. I think today's gospel calls us to ask us, do we want to open our eyes and see? Now, this is a little side note, but people are always asking me how to pray. And today's gospel has one of my favorite prayers, and it's called the Jesus Prayer. So, Sean, if you go online and look up the Jesus prayer, it'll say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, a sinner. And that's called the Jesus prayer. I didn't invent it. It comes from this gospel. And basically, if you use those words as like a mantra, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, a sinner. First of all, it recognizes that you need mercy because I know everybody here is perfect right Joan just not just Joan me too no okay and and we we don't need mercy because we're perfect right no but rather it recognizes that we need mercy 
that we are not perfect, that we fall short, and to recognize Jesus, Messiah, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, a sinner. And if you use that like as a prayer, like over and over and over and over, just with your breath, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, a, and, and then a sinner, out. Um, it can be like a form of prayer and a form of meditation. So look it up, ask Father Google about the Jesus prayer. It's Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, a sinner. Recognizing, opening our eyes and seeing that we're sinners is really an important part. And recognizing that we've been called and we're called to respond. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Let us come before our God with these, our needs. For our church, that it may open its eyes to the call for justice in our world, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For health care workers, that God may bless them with wisdom, skill, patience, and compassion as they care for the sick in need of healing, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ may open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters seeking asylum, shelter, food, and medical care, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. In a world marked by conflict, may we embrace a spirit of shalom, turning away from violence and vengeance towards peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of Gaza, Lebanon, and Israel, that we use our voices to encourage leaders to negotiate a ceasefire and end the indiscriminate violence against civilians in Gaza and Lebanon. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, may our candidates in this election season recognize the urgent needs of the country and the dignity and sacredness of all life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Scott Kelly, Rosemary Ware, Anthony Cristiano, Ralph Amidori Senor, Reverend Gustavo Guterres, the victims of natural disasters and the conflicts in the Middle East, and for all who have died, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you with these, our needs, through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
keeper, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you, we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. indeed holy and to be glorified O God who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life blessed indeed is your son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples so now for us he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread therefore father most merciful we ask that you send forth your holy spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, 
together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Take this bread, take this wine, now the simple maid divine for any to receive. By your mercy we come to your table, by your grace you are making us faithful. Lord, we
Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, I'd like to welcome all of our guests. I thank you for worshiping with us. We are a parish that does have a school and is through the generosity of our parishioners and of our guests in our second collection that our school is able to be amazing. So your support is greatly needed and greatly appreciated. And I think all of most of our children in our choir are in our school and all of our altar servers are in our school except Nathan who graduated and now he's like a senior server, right? Okay, good job. So I, yes. And I know Michelle, Michelle, this is our principal, Michelle. Y'all don't know Michelle do well yet, you know. There's Michelle. Y'all remember Steve. Where'd Steve go? Steve, where'd you go? Stand up, Steve. What is he hiding on me? Oh, there's Steve. He's now the assistant superintendent. There you go. Good job, Mr. Mr. Dole. Okay. All right, this coming Friday is All Saints Day, and so we will have a mass with our school children at 9.30, and they're all going to come as saints, right, Michelle? Good job. And so you can join us, and our school is amazing, and our children are amazing. So that's at 9.30, and then we have another mass at 12 noon. And so we have two masses on the celebration of All Saints Day. And then next Saturday night at 6 p.m., we have our All Souls Day prayer service. And that's at 6 p.m. after the 4 o'clock Mass, where we remember all of our loved ones who died since last November. And so we go from November to November, and so that's what all those pictures are. And uh, it's nice for all of us to come, because you'll be amazed how many people you maybe hadn't seen for years because they've been sick, but you'll recognize them when we uh, celebrate them and remember them at our All Souls Day service. And so that's next Saturday night at 6 p.m. Next Sunday, November 3rd at 3 p.m., our African-American ministry is hosting Valerie Jennings, and she is from the Tolton Spirituality Center in Chicago. And as you know, Father Tolton, we're working on his canonization as saint, and there will be a film presentation of Tolton Speaks. So this is an important opportunity for you to invite all of your African-American friends who probably, that's why it's at three o'clock, because a lot of African-American church services don't end till about two o'clock. And so you can invite them here at three o'clock. And we're trying to uh, increase um, our community's diversity, inclusiveness, whatever. So we thought a great way for you, for us to do that is for you to invite all your African-American friends to come to the special service on Father Tolton. Now, obviously, you need to come, but I really, and if you don't have any African-American friends, why not? What does that say about walking the talk and talking the walk or whatever? Anyway, so maybe you need to make some this week and then invite them to Sunday at 3 o'clock to Valerie Jennings' presentation on Tolton. Okay, Hillary and Alex will be performing in a play at the City Repertoire Theater in Palm Coast, Neil Simon's Jake's Women. Is it a musical? Yeah, it's a dramedy. It's a dramedy. Okay, it's not a musical, so it's a dramedy. And so that's from November 1st to the 17th, and there's more information at the office. But since Hillary is going to be in the Neil Simon's Jake's Women, there will not be any improv on Friday nights. So no improv for November. Oh, where am I? Did I, do, did I do that right? No? Okay. Okay. All right, don't forget our Community Problems Assembly is coming up on Tuesday, November 12th at Allen Chapel at 6, 6, it says 6, I think it's 6.30 p.m. That's one of the two meetings that we really try to attend at, as a community. And this year at the Community Problems Assembly, we're expecting for the Basilica of St. Paul to join us, as well as Prince of Peace Catholic Church are planning on joining us. And so certainly we want to be there to welcome them as part of our justice ministry, working together to build the kingdom of God here in our community. And th both those communities are much larger than 
hours, so we really need their help in working for justice. So certainly, hopefully you can attend on Tuesday, November 12th, and that's at 6 p.m. at Allen Chapel. Okay, and so now I ask all of our healthcare workers, all our doctors and lawyers, and that includes you, Dr. Agnam, you know, I'll stand up, all of our doctors I see. We have doctors everywhere throughout the church and, and attorneys, not attorneys, nurses. God, you can tell it's, uh, I, I, need, I need some. We appreciate you. Let us stay standing. Gracious God, we gather in your presence giving thanks for the gift of healing and the dedicated individuals in the ministry of caring for the sick. We ask for your guidance and strength for each member that they may serve with compassion, humility, and love. Bless their hands that they may bring comfort and relief and their hearts that they may embody your grace. Inspire them with wisdom as they navigate challenges and fill them with courage to face each day. May they find joy in their work and support in our community, knowing that they are instruments of your peace and healing. We pray in gratitude for those who have served in healthcare ministry. When they pass from this life, may they hear the words from Christ. When I was sick, you cared for my needs. Good job. Now inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. As we honor their ministry and commitment today, help us to uplift and encourage them that together we may fulfill our church's mission of loving the God we cannot see by loving the neighbor we can. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with all of you. Yeah, we can. I invite any children who'd like to join our uh, band for the last song. And also, as we leave church today, I'm going to invite our healthcare workers, wherever you're seated, you'll come out first and you get first dibs on the food. And uh, we have lots of food for everybody, so please join us in our chapel. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Stirs your soul.